JJ was in the Olympics, this guy would be its Michael Phelps. He completely outclassed UFC fighters. Set a series of records in the Olympics of submission grappling. Whoa! In the chat room is saying that Calvin Allen's a different guy this year. He taps him. And even ventured into MMA. Doing all this, I hope. See? Oh, now That's the armbar I mean. is coming against oh. Alessio. It's over. Ten time Jiu Jitsu world champion Andre Galvao commands unwavering respect in the world of combat sports. Don't go up there! The Brazilian legend reigned at the top of the sport for 15 years, facing off against the titans of his era. Big guy, oh, beautiful! And even though he retired from competition, Andre's legacy lives on and thrives through his students. Today, we'll enjoy this submission virtuoso's most epic moments. Nice arm drag, single leg. Doing a really nice job of... Yeah, this has been Galvan's go-to this weekend. Yeah, thank you. And he does. Now, here we go. Taps a super fight champion. Galvao was born in 1982 in the suburbs of Sao Paulo. His athletic journey began at the age of 12 with judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu training. Two years later, Andre's father lost his job, which forced the teenager to stop training and work at a pharmacy. He returned to the gym at the age of 17, and his talent immediately broke through. Called Deco for short, he relentlessly climbed the belt hierarchy. Becoming a five-time world champion in Gi Jiu-Jitsu, in 2007, the 24-year-old Galvao focused on no Gi or submission grappling without the kimono. Andre's debut took place in the qualifiers for his first ADCC against the relatively unknown Rafael Dos Anjos. Galvao needed just five minutes to catch the future UFC champion in a heel hook. He first appeared on the big screen in the 77 kilo division, winning bronze and finishing two opponents along the way. But losing the semifinal to Pablo Popovich in a match lost from the archives. Entering the absolute division, Galvao faced another future UFC champion, Fabricio Verdum. Deco spent the entire 20 minutes unsuccessfully trying to breach the giant's defense. In the final seconds, Fabricio locked in the Anaconda Strangle. But it was too late, and the judges awarded the victory to the more active Galvao. The grueling 20-minute match took a toll on Galvao's gas tank, which was bound to take effect in the next one. In 2008, Deco returned to his roots, tightening the belt and stormed through the brackets of the Pan American Championship, capturing double gold. Go, go! Even a good old cross-collar choke appeared in the menu. Strangles were selling like hotcakes. Just three months later, Galvao resumed humanitarian aid to the victims of insomnia at the World Championship. The two-time champion Braulio Estima received the same treatment in the finale. Galvao soared into the sky the moment they engaged, <laughs> forcing the antagonist to defend against a double threat, omoplata and triangle choke. Flying omoplata. The initial assault was repelled, but the opportunity to catch a breath never presented itself. The steamroller was gaining momentum. Now he can backstep And soon Braulio's collar deprived him of oxygen. Finish. This could be a finish. It's, I think it might be it done. He's pulling the leg. Oh, and we got a tap for Andre Galvao. With the 88 kilogram division in the rearview mirror, Galvao challenged the big guys. The renowned Roberto Cyborg Abreu was sent home packing first. Andre off balanced the adversary from the gate. Got a hold of the leg and secured a toehold. 
In the quarterfinals, Galvao faced another giant, Rafael Lovato. The reigning black belt king and later Bellator MMA champion was run over by a freight train. James Barber and Israel Olsen. Galvao executed a textbook back take. <laughs> and advanced to the finals with confidence. It seemed that no one would be able to stop the Brazilian's victorious rampage. However, Hodger Gracie had something to say about that. Considered the goat of Gi Jiu-Jitsu to this day, the renowned clan's lankiest member possessed an unmatched killer instinct and iron pliers for hands. He's gonna get him, man. Showcasing his strength not only on the mats. New light heavyweight champion. After a few minutes of wrestling with the Goliath on the feet, Galvao embarked on an unplanned aerial excursion. Undeterred, he immediately attacked the back. Albeit without much success. Seeing no prospects in the stand-up, Andre quickly pulled guard. But Hodger proved to be one step ahead again. Gracie slowly but surely progressed to a dominant position. And came close to a finish. But ultimately settled for a decisive victory by points. In search of new challenges and bigger paychecks, Galvao temporarily left the jiu-jitsu scene and directed his talent towards the realm of mixed martial arts. In December of 2008, he faced former Cage Warriors champion Mikey Gomez. To everyone's surprise, the one-dimensional BJJ practitioner landed a precise one-two and blew the disoriented rival off his feet. He then softened him up with strikes from the mount and easily snatched an arm. The promising newcomer with grappling credentials caught the attention of the reputable Japanese promotion Dream. And in his next fight, Deco faced UFC and WEC veteran John Alessio. Galvao wasted no time transferring action to his own domain. Galvao shoots in, Alessio is ready for it again. The threat of getting swept forced the foe to give up the back. Following a series of kicks to the butt, the Brazilian slammed Alessio on the mat and inserted the hooks. Galvao gets it right back to the ground. Several resounding hammer fists later, those are good, those are hammers. I mean, those hammers are driving in. Galvao grabbed a Kimura grip and transitioned to an arm bar. That's the arm bar. Breaking the fragile lock was a mere formality. I hope, see? Oh, now the arm bar is coming against oh. Alessio. It's over. Gaval gets him. After making a splash in the ring in September 2009, Andre took off the gloves, put on a rash guard, and flew to Barcelona to participate in the biggest tournament of the year. On his way to the final, he faced the future UFC middleweight champion and accomplished collegiate wrestler Chris Weidman. The Brazilian limb hunter started threatening with submissions from the outset. Weidman defended the omoplata, but carelessly exposed his back. Galvao, however, chose to go for the arm. Escaping the arm bar, Chris found himself neck deep in the jiu-jitsu swamp. Yet, his wrestling instincts came to the rescue. Andre swiftly countered guard passing attempts, while his opponent barely escaped time and time again. At some point, audacious Chris tried to lock in a Darce choke. and went all in applying the rare Peruvian necktie. Nice, dude, nice, nice, squeeze, 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 nice, got him, got him. 
Got him. Still, the seasoned Brazilian kept his composure and secured a win with a simple yet effective sweep from the turtle. Prevailing in the semis in a similarly conservative manner, Deco went on to face the familiar Braulio Estima. The patented Estima lock at the outset made it clear that the task would not be easy. The enemy countered inversion attempts brilliantly, constantly looking for the one hit or quitter. His wrestling looked solid as well, as he successfully took Andre down with a single leg. <laughs> Nevertheless, Deco pulled off an old school half guard sweep and almost passed the guard, but fell straight into the inverted triangle trap. Failing to claim the elusive ADCC, Galvao opened his own gym in California, which became a home for some of the best grapplers on the planet. Andre had a good warm-up at a tournament in New York. Championship, securing a beautiful unlock. And defeated another gentle art titan, Vinny Magalish. Oh, and Andre Galvao gets the roll. Andre Galvao. Galvao reasoned that the third time's the charm, so he should have another go at the submission grappling throne. On the ADCC 2011 mats, he faced Gunnar Nelson, a promising protege of John Kavanaugh with an 8-0 record in MMA. Galvao scored a successful takedown early on, and combined leg entanglements with back attacks. To Nelson's credit, he defended himself admirably. Nonetheless, in the final minute, Deco got three points for transitioning the mount and advanced up the bracket. In the semifinal, he encountered his old offender, Pablo Popovich. Andre set the tone with a leg entry and turned it into a sweep, almost smashing the antagonist into the judges' table. The referee restarted the action, and Galvao earned points for the takedown. Pablo elevated the rival into deep half guard, using it to stand back up. Avoiding unnecessary risks, Deco sat on his butt and solidified the lead in the dying seconds. The most dangerous challenge came in the match for the gold. The infamous leg locker, Rusamar Palhares, was known for handing out disability certificates, collected a few scalps on his way to the final, and sent poor David Avilan to the hospital bed. Toquinho immediately resorted to dirty tricks executed a beautiful takedown and opened the hunting season. Andre barely had a moment to breathe and it was time to do a bunk again. After a dynamic trade of positions, The grapplers returned to the center, and Galvao settled behind Palhares' back. In the heat of the battle, the brick-shaped maniac confused fingers with heels, and managed to escape unscathed. Rusamar delighted the crowd with a spectacular throw, to which Deco responded with a brilliant counterattack. The remaining time was spent in competitive exchanges, 
with Palhares ultimately failing to even the score. On his third attempt, the 29-year-old Galvao captured 80cc gold in the 88kg division and entered the absolute. This journey kicked off with a dismantling of a stylish samurai. The newly crowned champion swiftly teleported to the back. Drag the counterpart to the ground. And issued a verdict. The quarterfinal took place mostly on the feet. With Galvao earning winning points for the back take. After a hard fought victory in the semifinals, Andre crossed paths with Popovich yet again. So far, they were tied at one and one. Galvao skillfully arm dragged the opponent in the first minute. It's out of place. Nice arm drag, single leg. Doing a really nice job of. Yeah, this has been Galvao's go to this weekend. Uh, yeah. Destabilizing him to grab the single leg. He's in, he's got to climb up and run the pipe. Tries to run the pipe, and he does. Pablo instantly pulled Deco into deep half, for which he was rewarded first with a shin across the neck. Sits right over your head. And then a toehold in the leg lock shootout that ensued. The folks in the chat room are saying that Galvao is a different guy this year. He taps him. Whoa. Just as I said, he's a different guy this year. Galvao came out of the rivalry on top and rightfully took home two gold medals. Look at that. Having conquered the peak of no-gi grappling, the Brazilian shifted focus to super fights and gi jiu-jitsu tournaments. In March 2013, Andre participated in his sixth Pan American Championship, where he collected a harvest of limbs. And won gold at 88 kilograms. In the absolute final, he faced the reigning heavyweight champion, the mighty Marcus Buchecha Almeida, who to this day holds the record of 13 World Championship gold medals. He goes actually to the heel hook. That's quick. Deco overestimated his own takedown ability against the bigger man. Galvão has great stand. -up. Nice duck under. Nice counter by Buchecha. Uh oh. Now Galvão's on a single, but Buchecha too big, I think but managed to slip away defending the guard pass. He's able to recover, not only recover, but nearly end up on the top. Push Airline routes nice were shut down. Attack, nice try. <laughs> he gets Such style creative. points, yeah. yeah Buchecha zero. took note of the enemy's zero. ankle grip. Step back and pass now. And masterfully punished him with a modified crucifix. Oh, yeah. bad, bad position now. Actually, it's a very bad shot. Galvao managed to escape. That's a great shot, yeah. There, he did a oh. really nice job. Get back up. Great speed. Whoa, Galvao comes up. And level the score with an inside trip. Bouchesha's big guy. Oh, beautiful. Still, with half a minute left on the clock, Marcus put a decisive stamp. Oh, he's got that from a plot of sweep. That might do it. Press the action, always yeah. going. Soon, Andre had the opportunity to avenge his defeat to Estima in the World Championship semifinals. Pulling guard at the beginning, Braulio used the threat of an ankle lock to get on top. And eventually take the back, earning four points. Losing the contest, Galvao went for a Hail Mary toehold. In response, Estima simply taunted his fellow countrymen and sent greetings to Vote Sport subscribers. However, their rivalry continued. At ADCC in 2013, the reigning Absolute Division champion Galvao couldn't participate in the regular bracket. He would only have one match and challenge the Superfight champion, who was also a former Absolute Division king. And that turned out to be Estima. Securing an effortless takedown at the start, 
Galvao struggled against the opponent's impenetrable guard, who was constantly plotting something dubious. Albeit, the relentless pressure paid off, and the defensive fortifications were breached. In the ensuing chase, Andre snatched the neck and captured the prestigious title. With the wind at his back, Galvao struck a deal with a popular promotion called Metamoris to compete against Chael Sonnen. The Westland gangster was serving a suspension for having the entire periodic table in his system, and was eager to release some extra testosterone under grappling rules. Fight it out! Sonnen easily grounded the non-resisting adversary, Shoots in on that low single. and that was pretty much it. Andre pummeled in two underhooks from Butterfly Guard. Maybe looking for a knee slice. Created an angle to attack from half guard. This half guard, this could be a good spot for him. Stood up with a dominant body lock and taught Sun in a lesson. That's gonna be hard to do, man. Here's one hook. And here's the second hook. Go to sleep, you roided crook. In 2015, the Brazilian showcased his skills in Lisbon at the Open European Championship. Portugal's climate must have put Galvao in a good mood, as he was more exciting than ever. Dynamic guard passes. Surgically precise back takes. Deceptive takedowns. and even a flawless judo throw to Moe Nage. Naturally, submissions were in full supply. Arm bars. Bow and arrow choke. And north-south. Galvao was set to defend the ADCC Superfight Champion title at his home in Sao Paulo in 2015. The opponent was none other than his longtime acquaintance, Roberto Abreu, the 2013 Absolute Division Champion. Big Whoa! Big there it goes, there it is. Wow! The patented single leg was working wonders. And soon, the formidable cyborg tumbled down like an old Boston Dynamics robot. Andre effortlessly passed the guard and disappeared from the enemy's sight. The battle-tested Abreu seemed to find an escape route, but got trapped in a vicious cycle. The light at the end of the tunnel flickered too late. And even then, Deco dismissively flipped the switch off. In 2016, Galvao traveled to Abu Dhabi, where he crossed paths with Felipe Pena. A young talent known as Preguisa, or Sloth, who was on a 22-match winning streak and boasted an impressive list of victories, including Gordon Ryan. Felipe unceremoniously threw the veteran headfirst into the mat and chased his back, yet only managed to secure two points for the takedown. After the restart on the feet, Galvao got entangled in the guard and narrowly avoided being swept, but found a beautiful way out of danger, while also locking up an inverted triangle. At this point, the sloth had to show urgency, trying to even the score in the dying seconds. Andre attempted a desperate shot, which only widened the gap on the scoreboard. The sequel took place a year later at the World Championship. This time, Galvao took the lead with a takedown. 
Oh, yeah. nice takedown. Regisa did not idle from the bottom and looked to create action. Hit a takedown, and now he's going to start to attack the back. While his compatriots stubbornly refused to give up points. Galvo, but there's only so much you can do on but one hand. Got, there's... With half a minute left, Felipe achieved a position of dominance, but it was too late to turn the tide. He's got to finish right now, though, otherwise he loses. He might be unconscious. And no, he's he's good. Yes. In September of 2017, Andre would defend the ADCC Super Fight Championship belt. He was set to have one match against the Absolute Division Champion from 2015, who turned out to be Claudio Colasanz, an old friend and teammate with a black belt in Judo. Andre used feints to unsettle his rival, threw him down with ease, lifted him back up, only to ground him again. Bewildered, Claudio assumed the fetal position, which Galvao didn't hesitate to exploit. He secured the back with two hooks and steadily increased his advantage on the board. Calasance miraculously survived an arm triangle attempt. And, on his last legs, returned to the standing position, making it to the final whistle. Soon, the 36-year-old Galvao announced the next ADCC title defense would be the final act of his long and illustrious career. This contest held significant importance as it marked the end of the rivalry with Felipe Pena. Preguisa had a phenomenal performance in 2017, submitting Buchecha in the semis and defeating Gordon Ryan in the finale. Two, one, Felipe Pena. Galvao Pena. Andre set a furious pace from the word go. Look at this, John Williams. Galvao taking it to Felipe Pena. <laughs> and turned it into a successful double leg takedown. Oh, there it is. There's the shot. The double leg from Andre Galvao right away. He trapped Pena in a never ending defensive circle. But, but nope, again, this is where Felipe's strength is. He's just able to get in on those legs. Galvao should leave. Yep. Try to pull out. Forcing him to roll around like a tumbleweed just to create space. Yep, so far. In overtime, Deco staged a crash test using available furniture. Oh boy. Continued the pursuit. There it is again, another double leg to the other bat here. Can he hold it? Pena trying to scramble to counter. And they go all the way to mat number wow. three eventually stabilized the position and, last double gets Pena to the floor. and held on to the elusive sloth to earn the winning two points. Not letting Andre get those points. Galvao secured it now. He's locked the body. Two points for Andre Galvao. Andre Galvao is your super fight champion four time. However, retirement had to be postponed a bit when the Singapore-based promotion One appeared on the horizon with an enticing offer and a contract for a super fight against their reigning MMA champion and formidable grappler, Renner de Ritter. The Dutchman was well versed at defending leg attacks. Tries to press Galvao against the wall, but Galvao drops a guard. Forcing Galvao to seek alternative routes. That was a beautiful ready one hook in. The fence came to Rayner's aid this time. Andre continued mixing different levels of attack. To which De Ritter responded with the caution of a sapper. Did you see what I say about the difference in size? And Getting back on the feet, Galvao executed his favorite takedown. And even achieved mount. The opponent emerged unharmed nonetheless. Finishing the match with his head held high. According to one's rules, the bout was declared a draw. A draw! The swan song of the 40-year-old ADCC King came in a clash against the rising force, Gordon Ryan, who was determined to claim absolute dominance. 
the American no-gi specialist won at open weight two years prior. And got his chance to dethrone the monarch in 2022. Deco took the action to the ground pretty easily. That flash takedown. Gordon didn't offer much resistance and got to work. Galvon keep the legs separated. He should clear the knee. There he does. He turned the heel hook threat into a successful sweep. Rounds him, which is is much better. Uses it to come up to the top of turtle. Ryan flattened the Brazilian in half guard. But still a lot of pressure from Gordon here. And secured the back mount. The mount there he mounted now. The veteran held on as long as possible, but couldn't escape the inevitable. Closer. He's getting closer, like an anaconda, That's and he that. gets the it. submission! The generational shift had occurred, and Andre could finally enjoy his fully deserved retirement. And Andre Galvão here, the passing of the torch from the greatest of all time. Enjoy, Matt, the life. Although not actively competing, Galvao is still fully immersed in the sport he loves. With decades of high-level experience, he passes that knowledge to the next generation at the Atos Academy. And Andre's students maintain a high standard, following in their mentor's footsteps. It was incredible to see my students uh, doing really well. Cade Rutolo being the youngest ADCC champ. Ty came back in the open class and did such a great job. He's got it! Unbelievable! Ty Rotola! And everyone else. Batista Campeão Mundial! Hey, us! Thank you guys! Galvao's legacy continues to thrive, and his philosophy on the mats will serve as inspiration for combat sports enthusiasts around the globe. Whoa! Nice arm drag, single leg, and he does. Now, here we go. Taps him. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more jujitsu legends, choke out the like button, subscribe to the channel, and vote for sport. Take this as a lesson, guys. Keep training, keep riding, keep living, and you will achieve. Thank you.